Hi coaches, this is Shrocky. I'm going over the force coaches evaluations and how we're going to be grading practices. There are more details in the email about how the format's going to work and you can read the email or reach out to me if you have questions in regards to that. But basically how we're going to grade practices is you're going to put in the coach's name, uh, the date, the team that you're evaluating and then if it's a full or shared ice practice and for the select team so like for 8u and 10u select because they're sharing the ice um, you'll just basically grade it, it'll be a combined evaluation for those two teams so for example for 8u select you would just there's um, three teams you would basically grade the whole practice not each one of those teams individually because we want those 8u and 10u um, ages to be working um, together we want the coaches working together for the 12u select and 14u select teams they actually um, share the ice for practice so those would be done separately so you'd be grading um, they'd probably be using half the ice for their um, practice time on wednesdays that would be done differently. The 12U would get their own grade and be evaluated differently than 14U because they're in different age groups. But really how we're gonna evaluate, it's really simple. Uh, there's a rating scale at the, at the top that will just um, really be based on how well the, the coaches um, run the practice in different areas and the practice structure. It's, were they on time? You know, obviously three being the highest, two being average, um, low, meaning they, they weren't on time. Or if it just doesn't apply to that practice, you could put um, not applicable. The practice outline, you're really judging, did they have a game plan for practice? Did they have a, a practice plan um, that you could follow the, the practice? Did they follow the outline correctly? If they didn't have a practice outline to give you, then um, you would give them a one um, for that score. Use of assistant coaches' equipment, ice surface, um, were they efficient? Uh, you know, were they moving equipment every single time and um, for every drill, or could they have, you know, utilized the drills where they didn't have to move the pucks and, and equipment or, you know, reorganize their drills so there wasn't as much movement and they could have maybe gotten an extra drill in? That's really what we're looking for is how efficient the coaches are. And then the time at the board, how much time are the coaches using on the ice to explain drills? And then any notes you um, observed can, can go in this area. Teaching techniques, you know, skill work to team concept ratio. You know, obviously uh, that's based on, on your opinion, but if, you know, for these teams, all of them, we, we wanna make sure the coaches are, are working on skills and practices. Uh, drill progressions. Were they doing a, um, a drill or a skill that progressed through the practice? Was it obvious that um, you know, the practice was, was focused on a certain concept? Um, were the demonstrations effective? Um, either the coaches demonstrating or having the kids demonstrate the drills, um, you know, or, or even at the at the whiteboard, were they um, were, were the kids given a good example before being introduced to the drill, and then the engagement. You know, this is a big one. Coach player communication. How do the coaches communicate? Um, evidence of player enjoyment. Obviously, were the kids having fun on the ice? Goalie engagement. Were the goalies used as shooter tutors, or were we um, were we focused on skill development for goalies? And then player activity, obviously we want the kids to be, to be moving in their practices. Um, and then the biggest thing really, safety, right? Player supervision, were the kids out on the benches without coach supervision when the Zamboni's on the ice? Um, were the gates closed for practice? This is a big one. We have to shut the gates, making sure that we're not running drills with the boards open. And then just attention to, you know, risk management. Are there, you know, kids shooting pucks um, when coaches aren't paying attention? Are, are, are the kids, you know, being safe when they're on the ice? And then um, finally, we're just going to list three things that the coaches 
did well, and then three things that you think they could improve on. And then you'll turn those in to me every month. And what I like to do is when I have my monthly conversations with the coaches is just give them feedback on different areas um, where they can improve and things that they're doing well. And, you know, this is really to not to babysit the coaches, but to find areas where uh, we can help our coaches improve or give them ideas to run um, better practices. So uh, let me know if you've got any questions, but I will be sending this attachment out and you can print them out and I'll put a schedule together for when we can get started on this. But I'd like to get started in, in October and uh, making sure that we're collecting this information um, you know, by the end of the month. Thank you.